Good morning guys, good morning internet, good morning YouTube, hi, hello, my name is EJ, um, I'm an artist and I do narrated time lapse for my YouTube channel and here's another narrated YouTube video for you guys. So yeah, uh, I just simply just talk about what happened during the creation process of any of my artwork that I recorded uh, when I was creating it and yeah, I talk about it. <laughs> so. Here we are now talking about one of my favorite sketches from 2018 and this one is called Heavy Mecca Pouring Coffee. So yes, um, real quick uh, before I talk about where the idea came from yeah, da, da, and all that stuff, uh, let's talk about what's going on in the video right now, which obviously I started out with a simple sketch, you know, I'm kind of sketching out my robot it's a heavy mech it's a heavy robot um and um i started with the robot and then um after that i just kind of just drew everything around that around the robot um you pretty much you guys pretty much just saw what the final product is it's like a robot hanging out in a coffee shop or working in a coffee shop of some sort you know and um so yeah, I, I started with the robot and then I kind of drew everything around the robot and whatnot. So yeah, but <laughs> that's what's going on and that's what's going to happen in the next few minutes where I kind of just sketch out the rest of the scene. Um, but real quick, I guess we could talk about where the idea come, came from. Uh, so the idea is came from a prompt from conceptart.org uh, and there was this sub forum. In that particular uh, forum, uh, the site's not around with us anymore, uh, which you guys already know, uh, if you guys have been <laughs> keeping watch of my channel. Um, but there's a sub forum in that forum, and one of the sub forums is Daily Sketch Group. And basically, there's a prompt every day, and you can draw whatever you want based on the prompt. Um, and this particular prompt was really kind of like special for me. Like, I... I it's it's very special for me simply because this was like the first of the daily sketch prompts that I did where for some odd reason I didn't stop sketching um okay I'm like getting very convoluted with my explanation okay so to paraphrase or to restart my explanation or whatnot uh, I guess we'll just talk about what happened in 2018. So I started doing the daily sketches in conceptart.org way back in 2018. And when I first started joining the group and when I first started getting involved with the group, uh, typically what I just did was just simple sketches, like literally sketches. I wouldn't do scenes. I wouldn't do full compositions. I wouldn't do a full speed paint. Um, I typically just draw like a simple thing, whatever the prompt asks for, if it asks for a dog, I would just draw a dog and then nothing else and that's it. And the reason why this particular speed paint is special to me was because this was the very first one where it kind of naturally came out of me where it was like, you know, instead of just sketching out the robot, which is basically what the prompt asked for, the prompt basically says heavy mech pouring coffee and literally if you just read that prompt you could just draw a robot pouring coffee and be done with the day or be done for the day you know you don't have to do anything else aside from drawing that but um yeah for some odd reason i did not stop sketching i was just like i, I felt like sketching a whole scene out and so that's pretty much what ended up happening here you know like you could see me just rocking on with the sketch like like there's no tomorrow you know and so basically the reason why I love this particular speed paint well a I love this particular speed paint because I really love the result like the overall end product I mean there's plenty of things I could comment about it and there's plenty of things I could critique about it but for the most part I'm actually very very happy with the way it came out so that's one of the reasons why I love this piece. The second reason, again, is because of what I just explained just now. You know, it this marks 
this basically marks a transition in my practice um back in 2018 when i was doing the daily sketch group i was just treating it kind of like as a warm-up you know where i would loosely draw something for 20 30 minutes and not think too much about it you know this was the first one that kind of initiated this thought in me where i was like you know i could really use this to practice my speed paints because i'm horrible with speed painting like horrid 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 with speed painting like i'm you know just not very good at it and I'm still not actually come to think of it. I'm still I'm still not very good at speed painting. I mean I've gotten better over the years and I've gotten some techniques down that I'm kinda happy. And a lot of my two, three hour speed paints I'm kinda really digging now versus before where I'm just like, oh I hate everything. So like that's nice, you know. Uh but my thirty minute speed paints, um, which I'm part of the the daily spit paint group in Facebook, which were required to do 30 minute speed paints on that one on that particular group. That one's too fast for me. Like I just I could not handle the 30 minutes. I always feel like I need to take more time than 30 minutes because it's just it's too condensed. But anyways, going back to this piece, um this I think took me like uh I already forgot. It was it was mentioned earlier in the video how long it took me. But if I'm not wrong, it was between an hour and two. So something like an hour and a half to two hours um was how long this one took. So, you know, it didn't really take that long. Uh but yeah, it was just immensely exciting for me because it was like when I did this piece you know and I got done with it and I finished it I was like wow the end result is really good and that's when the light bulb just came on my head I'm like wow I could do daily sketch group as my speed paint practice and so after this particular you know prompt that's what I started doing with the daily sketch group you know um started using it uh as a platform to practice my speed paints so yeah but that's it for the idea and that's it for you know what I really wanted to talk about this piece in terms of like what really got me excited about it um so yeah but um to talk about what's going on in the scene now since I took the time to explain my love for this illustration um I just got finished with my sketch and if you notice like towards the end of it i was having serious issues with the perspective um and i still am like there's still some aspects of the perspective in this particular illustration that i'm still not happy about like i'm just like oh <laughs> you know it bothers me the ceiling is wonky and obviously the floor tile is wonky like it's too warp looking like and I made some minor adjustments throughout the illustration. Um, you'll see me worked on it uh, some more. The whole uh, perspective of it. And But anyways, yeah, I never really officially like fixed it. But it's okay because for the most part, it really wasn't noticeable for me. So I just, you know, let it go. Uh, but yeah, in the final end of the sketch stage, I, I was like erasing and redrawing and erasing and redrawing and then I set up for the sketch lines that I have now, which I will eventually change later again. And then after that, I added like a plain color, uh, typically dark because I, I want to do dark to light uh, just to get some values in. So what I decided to do was I have the dark red and then the light blue light to kind of initiate where the light area is and you can tell just based from those two colors that I'm kind of trying to emulate like a charoscuro effect on this one where the idea is that there's this front door that's maybe open or something and like the majority of the light is coming from this front door and it's hitting the barista mech <laughs> the robot barista and his uh human accomplice his human partner in crime um so there's a shaft of life that's hitting them so it kind of like provides a focal point for the illustration and then i did some other like value ranges on there like the ceiling i i put like a dark blue and then i added like a light green on the windows and the background windows um 
I was just experimenting with this because this is all kind of still brand new of a workflow for me. Nowadays, I don't even bother with any other value ranges. I just typically just stick with two to start out my base layer, um, which is something dark and something light, and that's it. And it don't even matter what color they are. They could be, you know, uh, complementary colors or they could be like colors from the opposite end of the color wheel like it don't matter where the colors come from what matters is that one's light and one's and one's dark and as soon as I use that as like my base paint my base layer I kind of you know build everything around that um, so yeah but in the case of this particular illustration, what I did was I did a bunch of photo bashing, which the photo bashing didn't really have anything to do with the illustration. It was more like color information because people typically when they photo bash, they grab like parts of the photo to use as textures for the photo. I didn't even do that for this one. I just wanted some extra color information. So I just put like one or two photos in which you saw me do and then after I did those uh, photo bash, I came back in with uh, my favorite, favorite <laughs> random mech brush from Kita and I set it to like key variation and then I put just some random extra random colors in everywhere. Um, and then based on the light and dark. Um, some of these random colors that I put in would get lighter and some of the random colors would get darker which that's what the selection tool was if uh, if I'm not wrong I saw the selection tool earlier and then and since I was talking I wasn't sure what I was doing with the selection tool but anyways typically that is my workflow is that as soon as I put like random colors in I'll come back with the selection tool and lighten some areas up and then darken some areas up based on that base paint that I have. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> and then as soon as I have all this, I would just smush all of those mess, all those craziness that I've done into one layer and then I start smudging it into recognizable shapes which is what I always say which is what I'm doing right now I, I've finally put everything into one layer and just slowly putting all of this into like recognizable shapes and then when I'm done with with that that's when I start my de detailing process where basically I just paint on top of this one messy layer that I created based on my initial uh, photo bash and sketching session and whatnot. So yeah, um, that's what you'll see me do for the rest of the, well not for the rest of the video, but for the next few minutes you'll just watch me smudging. Okay, so I finally finished um, smudging and what you just saw me do was uh, I brought up my a copy of my original sketch and um, I don't know what I just did up there. I just merged that original sketch back into the original layer. But I, I brought that original sketch in to just to kind of help me figure out uh, my shapes again. Because uh, sometimes when you when I do the smudging thing like the shapes could get really messy that I sometimes I get really really confused as to where the edges are um, 
so sometimes I bring it back in uh, and sometimes I don't um, sometimes I just work with what I have um, clearly for what happened in this illustration was that I brought it back up and then I decided to just merge it back into that one layer so I could have something to work it and now I'm bringing up another sketch what am I doing dude what am I doing uh, Okay, I don't understand why there was like an extra copy of layer sketch in there, but okay, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, I'm pretty sure, I'm almost sure that I merged everything back into one layer because that's my typical workflow is just to work with one layer. So yeah. But I probably brought back another copy of another of the sketch layer just to kind of help me figure out where some of these windows are. That's what I'm assuming was what that little action is. But yeah, um, but yeah, after the smudging, I just pretty much start the detailing process, which I've mentioned this before. Uh, the detailing process is pretty much straightforward for me. I delineate my edges, I accentuate my shadows, and add highlights. Um, when I mean what I mean by delineating my edges is basically I make things sharper, make things clearer. Like right now, I'm trying to define the shape of uh, the painting in the background because there's a painting in the background and I wanted to isolate it um, so I made a selection for some parts of the wall that didn't kind of that was too green because the painting is obviously green right and there were some parts of the wall that was kind of green so I needed to knock it out so that's what that lasso tool was so I knocked those green out I isolated my painting in in that wall and so I'm marking my edges, making making it clear that you could read that, that there's a painting back there, it's abstract or something. Um, so that's what that was. And then now I'm working on the floor, doing the same thing, you know, kind of accentuating or delineating the edges of my tiles so that you know where all the tiles are. And then of course I accentuate the shadows. Accentuating shadows is basically just like enhancing the darkness of it if it needs to be enhanced. And then adding highlights is pretty straightforward. It's kind of like common sense. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really just straightforward. You know, I, I just do this rinse repeat throughout, um, throughout the whole illustration. I started that process initially in the background where I marked all the edges of the windows and all the edges of the people back there and I added some shadows to make the people in the background read clearer. Uh, I didn't really touch up on the on the ceiling um, initially but I'll come back to it later and work some more on that. Um, and then obviously I'm doing uh, the tiles and then the little counter area. And then uh, I'm going to start concentrating on the people repeating the same process of delineating my edges, accentuating the shadows, and adding highlights.
Okay, so I am basically starting on my favorite, favorite part of this illustration, which is detailing the robot, the heavy mech. Um, again, you know, um, when I started detailing, I really didn't know like what details I was going to put, you know, I mean, there's like a general guideline of the original sketch that I left in there. Um, and basically I would just work around that sketch, you know, um, you saw me when I was working on the face of the rope, when I was working on the face of the robot, I was adding highlights. Um, again, adding those highlights would kind of like mark the edges of that robot, uh, and kind of help the shape of the robot read easier. So, um, so yeah, uh, basically that's what I was doing where I, I would just go around and kind of like add all this little minute highlights uh, in the robot area. And this was fun. Uh, I thought this part of the illustration was really fun because it was just like me just kind of just like making stuff up as I go, you know, with no real clear idea of how things were going to be. I mean, yeah, there's the initial sketch, but the initial sketch was just very loose. So I didn't really know what was going to go on. Um, but that's what makes so, f uh, that's what makes this little illustration so much fun was because, you know, I'm kind of just like going with the flow and coming up with stuff as I go. <laughs> it's just so much fun doing things that way. Um, I ran into some problems in the window behind the robot because uh, that window um, was kind of like obscuring the read of that left arm that's pouring the coffee. So I fixed that. Uh, eventually, like right now, I'm just working on the one on the right arm, and then eventually, when I start working on the left arm, I'm gonna fix that that window because you know his left arm isn't reading very well. Um, and as soon as I'm done with the robot, I worked on the lady, uh, on the girl that's right next to him. And I had a hard time with that girl, like trying to figure out what her pose was, um, was difficult. It's not like the two customers up front, like the lady that's, you know, talking to the robot or looking at the robot and the guy talking in the phone. Like those two characters came, just came out of me naturally that they, they were very fun to draw because when I was just sketching them out like you know it just came to my head what their poses was going to be like and I didn't really think too much about what they were going to look like so that that was fun like working in those two was fun but the girl on the counter that's right next to the robot she was difficult for me because I couldn't figure out like what her pose was and what she was going to look like so um, I had to basically like redraw her, which you'll see me do. And uh, right now I'm working that left arm, the left arm that's holding the coffee. And then you see me fix that window just so that, you know, the robot's arm could read better. Uh, so yeah, I totally fixed that. Um, but yeah, going back to the girl, uh, I had to basically like resketch her. And so what I did for that was uh, I brought this white layer in. Um, just so that I could obscure the painting a little bit. Uh, so I put that white layer in like some form of opacity and then I added another layer on top of that to do this quick initial sketch of the girl. Um, and then I colored it in real quick and then as soon as I have that sketch and that in quick color of the girl I merged it all back into my original painting and started my work from there. So yeah. You can see me work on the barista female right now and I'm having such a hard time with her.
okay so it wasn't a white layer <laughs> it was a brown layer I thought it was a white layer but here here I am resketching the girl out real quick and then I'm gonna add colors man I spent such a long time on her like that last two minutes was just me like trying to like fix this girl wow I couldn't believe the amount of time I spent on her that was kind of hilarious watching but yeah eventually I got her you know eventually I figured her out so yeah but anyways this painting is almost close to being done after I finish with this girl um, like I said I just merged her back onto the original painting and then did some few fixes on her then after that what I did was I did a quick selection real quick so I could um, uh, add some color dodge on the robot and on the verse the female so I quickly selected them and then went back with a color dodge brush just to kind of highlight them even more and to make them pop out even more and then I made some fine minor fixes on the ceiling and on the floor I think not too much uh, and then after that I called this painting done so yeah um, I was really really happy with the result in this one like you know like I said I had fun with that robot especially with that robot because the robot was like the highlight of of the whole illustration you know because here's this like heavy robot pouring coffee like you would think that this robot would have you know a much more industrial job than pouring coffee for people but that's what's going on in this scene you know it's kind of comical in a way you know kind of like out of the blue you know you go into your favorite coffee shop and then boom there's this huge robot working there and is just hanging out pouring coffee for people so yeah it's kind of a, like a hilarious um little speed paint that I did and I think that's the reason why I love this painting the most is because there's that comical aspect to it so yeah This is it. This is the finishing touches, touches right here. The finishing touch right here. The color dodge, which you just saw me put, and yeah, it helped made the central characters brighter. So yeah, that's it for this illustration. Thank you guys for watching it with me. Like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good night.